All right, guys, so I have some good news for tonight. I was working on my Notion database and all of a sudden I see a little blue bar pop up at the top of the screen and it says Notion has an update. So I thought to myself, what could this be, right? So I went ahead, refreshed Notion, and then I went over to their what's new page. And what do you know, they've just added subtasks and dependencies. So this is something that people have talked about for a long time. And it's something that I think is really going to benefit teams quite a bit. For this video, I just wanted to kind of give my first reaction and show you guys how to use it and how the features work. But basically it allows you to add these subtasks within your database underneath, uh, let's say like this is your task or your project and then underneath it you have a task and then you have a subtask under that. They also have dependencies in the timeline view now so you can see how things are connected together. So let's jump into Notion and see what this is all about. All right, so here we are with a blank page and I'm just going to call this page tasks. Oh, I guess it doesn't need to be all caps. Let's just call it tasks and uh, let's go to database table. Okay, we're going to start with the table. I'm going to hit new database and let's give it a little icon. Let's go with the check mark, maybe a green check mark. I'm going to start out just by naming this first property task and then I'm going to go ahead and delete this tags property. And we're gonna add a few more properties to illustrate a good example of how you can do like tasks, subtasks, and then you can even do tasks within the subtasks. It can go infinitely deep, kind of how pages are set up in Notion. You can set up as many pages as you want. As far as I can tell, you can at least go three layers deep on the subtasks. I haven't tried to go any crazier with that, but we'll see uh, what we can do. So let's just go ahead and add some properties in here. I'm going to add a status property and we're going to leave it at status. That's fine. We have not started in progress and done. I think those are good. We could also have one that says like stuck on the in progress. That could be another way that we could indicate the status of a task. So now we have not started stuck in progress and done. And Let's go ahead and change the icon of this status here. And I actually think this is a good place to start for our properties. I don't think we need any other properties to illustrate how this works. I suppose a date property would also be good. And we can even add an end time. This will help me illustrate dependencies a bit better. Let's go ahead and delete these out of here now and start fresh with a brand new one. Now the difference between the way that we used to set something like this up is that now we have it set up where your tasks, your subtasks, and your projects would all be within the same exact database. Whereas it used to be that you would have like three different databases for all of those different things. So that's something that some people may really like about this and some people may dislike. So for me, I was a little bit turned off by that. I like keeping everything in a separate database just because I like to be able to view it in different ways. But that's my personal opinion. I'm sure that this will be useful to some people so I'm going to show you how it works. So we're just going to start out by adding a new task. And this task is actually going to be more of like our project level. So I'm just going to call this paint the wall. And it will be a step by step process for painting this wall. And let's say the action dates are between today, the 15th. And let's set the end date for next week on the 22nd. Now the thing is, is there's a lot that goes into painting the wall and if we wanted to, we could just stick with this database and as we move along, we can change the status. But if you want to see the more granular steps that go into painting the wall, then you're going to want to click on these three dots right here and now you'll notice that you have this sub items area. So I'm just going to click on sub items. So we've got parent item project and then beneath that we might have like task and I'm going to hit create and what that's going to do is it's going to create some relations here but these aren't the type of relations that you might be used to these are relations within the same database so normally you have your relations and they're relating separate databases but now we're actually staying within the same database with these different types of relations so just to give you a bit of an example of how this would work there's now a drop down where I wrote paint the wall and I can add new sub items. And these are considered our tasks. As you can see, this project right here has a task of untitled because I haven't typed anything, but now that I'm typing, as you can see, 
has that related task. So I'm just going to add in a few things here. Let's say that we need to hang drywall. Then we need to mud drywall. After that, we will need to sand drywall. And as you can see, all of these tasks are related to the project that they're under. And you can always open or close this, but I'm just gonna add a few more sub items here. Now, as you can see, we have five steps that are going to go into painting the wall and they all have their own individual statuses. Now, just to get a little bit more granular with this and plan out my routine a little bit better, I could go into each of these for hang drywall, for instance, and I could say, let's hang the drywall on the 15th and 16th. So I'm gonna change the end date here to 16th, keep the start date at the 15th. And then the next task, we're gonna turn on end date and we're gonna go from the 16th there to the 17th. Then let's say this next one is from the 18th to the 19th, add primer coat 19th to the 20th and add finish coat 20th to the 22nd. We'll have some extra time since our overall deadline ends on the 22nd. So this is essentially how the subtasks work and you can also add subtasks within here and for this particular case we wouldn't have to necessarily do that but we totally could just by hitting add new sub item we could add another sub item within hang drywall as you can see here under task it's going to pull up untitled for hang drywall now because we have a subtask within that I'm just going to delete this. I just wanted to show you that that was possible. Next, we're gonna set up dependencies. And in order to do this, you're gonna to wanna to jump over to the timeline view. The timeline view is pretty much the only view from my knowledge that allows you to see dependencies as of right now, at least in a visual way. The dependencies will create a new property within your Notion page, but to see the dependencies actually connect to one another, you're gonna to wanna to be in the timeline view. So let's go ahead, click on these three dots, go to layout and change to timeline. And now, as you can see, we are in the timeline and we have our whole project here. We can open and close it and we can relate this project using these dependencies here. So in order to do this, you're gonna wanna first click on these three dots and then go to dependencies and you can just click create new relation. And this is where it's going to give you the two new properties that you can create. So you'll have a blocking property and that means that this particular task is blocking all of the tasks that are in that column. And the blocked by will show you any tasks that are blocking the task that you're looking at. So let me show you what I mean. And now it's going to allow us to drag these in a sequential order where they're blocking each other essentially. So hang drywall needs to happen before you mud the drywall and then you need to mud the drywall before you can sand and so on with adding the primer and the finish coat. So this is kind of what the dependencies look like from a view like this if you're in the timeline. But if you go back to a table, you'll notice that now it's added a few extra relational properties here. It has blocked by so that you can see what's holding this particular task up. Mudding the drywall, we see that we need to hang the drywall before we can mud because that's what's blocked by. And for blocking, we can see that hanging the drywall is holding up mudding the drywall. So now where this gets really interesting is you can add in an assignee. So if I hit the plus button here and I'm working in a team, I can hit person. We're just gonna call this assignee. And here, if I'm going to be the one hanging the drywall, I can add myself here. If I'm the one mudding the drywall, I can add my brother. And then I can add me for this next step and my brother and then my other brother for the finish coat. So now we can all work as a team and see what's holding up what, and we can see what's dependent upon what. And if I want to, I can even hit the plus button. If I want to toggle between my views, we can add a timeline here hit done and then I can open this up and click on these three dots go to properties and you can toggle on assignee so now you can see who this is assigned to and who is waiting on who it would also be useful to toggle on the status so that I can see what the status is of that particular task 
So then when I'm hanging the drywall, I can put in progress and the person who has to mud the drywall can see that that task is in progress right now. But once I go ahead and hit done, it's going to be time for them to mud the drywall so they see this is done and down the pipeline, they know what's coming. This has just been a basic introduction to subtasks and dependencies. I was super excited to get a video out and I hope that this helped you understand the feature better. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like this video. Comment below leaving any feedback that you have or any way that you can think about using this new feature. And also subscribe to stay updated with this content. It'll also help the channel and you'll get more notifications. If you hit the bell icon, you'll be notified of new features just like this when they come out and we cover them. All right, we'll see you in the next one.